Hello, Internet. Welcome to another episode of the Get Geek Podcast. Um, This week, we're going to do a little bit of discussion on some news from season two of The Mandalorian. But first, I just want to let you guys know. Um, As we have been letting you know the last couple of weeks, we've been having some minor sound quality issues. We are recording remotely. We're all recording from our homes. Um, We're using an online web app in order to do it. So if you hear any audio artifacts, little feedback, anything like that, please try to bear with us. We're doing the best that we can right now to try to iron out those problems over these weeks. But everyone's dealing with some issues right now since we're all at home and uh, we're not used to it like we should be. Uh, and just another reminder also before we get started, uh, you can find our podcast anywhere that your favorite podcasts are broadcast. Um, you can find us on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Um, again, just about anywhere that you can find a podcast. It would really help us out if you would go on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, like, rate, share, and subscribe this podcast or any of our past podcasts if you want to go back and take a look or a listen. I should say, to some of our previous content, Um, but we would really appreciate that. Anyway, uh, let's get started. Do the introductions real quick. I am Jose. This is Wolfie. AJ. Eli. And this is Walt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wolfie, why don't you tell us a little bit about how we're going to do the format of this conversation today? So, so this is essentially a geek out episode, basically, because we're all geeking out over the big news that Boba Fett is back. Am I right, guys? Yes. Am I right? <clears throat> Am I right? <clears throat> geeking out? Does a geek out? <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. What did so, you say? <laughs> so the most the most amazing news in the Star Wars universe that that has come out is that Boba Fett is alive. He's canon. He's coming out. It's been pretty much confirmed, even though Disney hasn't confirmed it. But uh, Tamora Morrison has been cast as Boba Fett in the season two uh, upcoming, the upcoming second season of The Mandalorian, which is absolutely amazing news. Honestly, I could care less about anything else that happens in The Mandalorian. Um, just the fact that they are officially canonizing Boba Fett and confirming that he is alive is enough for me. Um, are they though? So we're going to be talking a little bit about that as well as the other castings. Uh, yeah. I was just going to say like, um, no? we don't, we don't know if it takes place after the events of the return of the Jedi. So let's not jump to conclusions there yet. Oh, exactly. come on. Oh, I'm come just saying, on. We have to be fair. We have to be fair. We'll, 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 we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that in a moment. Maybe, maybe they're going to talk about okay. Yeah, like, we'll talk about that later. Go ahead. We are. We are. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. How? Oh, that's what you mean. Because I was going to say, how are you going to change up the Mandalorian timeline like that? It could we'll, be we'll talk about that. But anyway, we'll yeah, talk about we'll all that stuff. We'll talk about all that stuff. But anyway, we're going to be going over um, the fact that Tamora Morrison has been cast as Boba Fett and as Rex. Um, as well as the fact that, you know, we have Ahsoka Tano uh, and Bo-Katan, who is also going to be making an appearance, and a couple other cast, castings that are really interesting. So um, with Tim- uh, Timothy Oliphant and Michael Bean. We don't know as of yet what Timothy Oliphant and Michael Bean are going to be playing. They could just be stormtroopers or, uh, you know, imperials or whatever. They might be mercenaries. Um but uh, but again, going back to the really, really major big news, let's go ahead and talk about Boba Fett right now. So um, I would like to know, I mean, I think I have an idea already of what you guys think is going to happen in season two. But I'd like to kind of go around the, the table real quick or the virtual table and see what your best guess is for how they bring Boba Fett back and what it would mean for the second season of The Mandalorian. Let me jump in, if I may, since I kind of interrupted you with some with some theories while you were setting us up. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm not saying necessarily um, at all that he's not going to be alive after his incident with the Sarlacc pit, because what I think they might do, actually, in reality is, 
I think we're going to see Boba Fett inserted into the Mandalorian's backstory, Din Djarin's backstory somewhat. I mean, it, it stands to reason that he probably was somewhere around or somewhere involved with the, with the massacre of the Mandalorians. It was the Night of a Thousand Tears. I can't recall the exact name of it. Um, but he, it stands to reason that he was either around in, in the, on, on Mandalore or somewhere where all of this took place. He had to be involved somehow. So I feel like he's going to factor into the backstory, the past, maybe not necessarily specifically Din Djarin's past, actually, now that I think about it a little bit more, but I feel like, yeah, we're going to get a little bit of, of Boba Fett before Return of the Jedi and we're going to get, I think we'll, we'll see him end up affecting the future as well. End up being a, a character that's basically a present, present in the present, I should say. Um, I mean, as to what his role is going to be, that's going to be really difficult to say because you have a lot of stuff from the Legends universe that's no longer officially canon. Um, I mean, it's head canon to some of us and it stands to reason again that a lot of that stuff is what occurred when it comes to Boba Fett's backstory, but it's really, it's really, yeah, it's really hard to say where he's going to go with this role in, in both the past and in the present, if they take him into that, into that aspect of the show. Um, I don't know. What other thoughts do you guys have? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't think that, um, you know, I personally don't think that's going to be a flashback scene or anything like that, mm-hmm. simply because there is going to be an expanded role. It's already been confirmed that there's going to be an expanded role for uh, Boba Fett in the third season already. So I don't see how they yeah. just use him as a background or to explain some history, unless the third season is just going to be more history about, you know, Din Djarin and his background and some sort of relationship with uh, Boba Fett. Um, I have a theory that even so, might be the case, only because of the the episode with Bill Burr and like that crew that kind of is involved with with his past. I think they will visit it more in season two, so that's why to me it stands to reason as possible. But again, I don't think that they're just going to keep him in the past. I think they are going to have him in the present as well. I I yeah. do think that they will have something related to his past actions, though, that relate to the present for the Mandalorians and everyone else. Right, but that's also why I'm saying that, like, I, I, at the very least, like, I, I personally don't care how they do it, you know, as long as they confirm that he climbed out of the Sarlacc pit, you know. Uh, so that's that's my guess. My 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 biggest guess is, I believe, and and this is funny because I think I'm, I may have like spoken about this on an episode of the Mandalorian that we did, mm-hmm. you know, a podcast review or whatever, or maybe I spoke we spoke about this just personally. But my theory was already that, like, the way that they're going to bring Boba Fett back is possibly in the, at the last episode, at the very end of the episode, where they do the big reveal of that wonderful Boba Fett armor. Um, you know, maybe he maybe he saves Jin, Din Djarin in some uh, some form and whatnot, and then and then that just sets up the real Boba Fett storyline in the third uh, season. Um, you know, there's that, or. Um, you know, Boba Fett is the greatest bounty hunter alive. Maybe he successfully gets uh, Baby Yoda off Din Djarin's hands. And that can mm-hmm. set up a season three also where it's like, you know, you have these opposing, you know, bounty hunters and stuff. Um, and uh, again, it doesn't necessarily make Boba Fett a bad guy because, again, it's just a bounty. And bounty hunting is a uh, complicated, uh, what, what's the <laughs> complicated, complicated, profession. A complicated profession, right? It doesn't automatically make him a bad guy. It's just a matter of, like, you know, serving uh, his his uh, his wallet, so to speak. So I think that those are I think that that's how he'll make his appearance. It's in the final episode to set up the third season. And I think that it's going to be a um, an opposing uh, character to Din Djarin as opposed to a supporting character. Ah, interesting. You know what I mean? So, so, yeah. I don't know. Hashtag Django had the better armor. Uh, wow. Oh, man. Wow. Okay. All right. We're, we're starting, we're starting, we're starting with fire now. I love Django's armor, but I don't know. Like, now that I look at Django and I see the copycat Din Djarin with his all best car. Uh, Mandalorian armor. There's just no pizzazz. There's no character in that armor. 
I didn't. I didn't. Okay. At least, at least this guy killed Jedi and didn't fall into a sarlacc pit like a noob. The oh my gosh! The thing that I have—it's all good. You can say whatever you want. At least he survived. The, the thing that I have—we don't have confirmation of that yet. Let's let's not jump the gun on that one. We were, we're all hoping. Well, at least he I'm survived. Hoping, I'm hoping that he did. He survived. But, we all know that he survived. But, yeah, I I have a take on the Boba Fett character. I, I think um, season two is going to show him still in the Sarlacc and he's doing a live stream <laughs> out of his stomach. Zoom, he's doing a Zoom in the Sarlacc pit. That, that's, You're no, terrible. Zoom You're the worst. They, they do have Zoom meetings in the Star Wars universe, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, no, in all, uh, in all, he's, been, he's, been, he's been quarantined in the Sarlacc all this time. Well, <laughs> there you okay, go. I'll, I'll say this. As far as in terms of being being a way to sort of redeem his, his stupid ending in The Return of the Jedi, I'll say ending in quotes, right? Because we want to say he's alive. That would make it more interesting. But in order to redeem that, I think they really need to show him getting out of the Sarlacc in some just badass way. That. On the Mandalorian, in some really interesting or badass way, like him using his intelligence or like something else to get the heck out of there before, like you know, his armor starts to melt and he starts to melt. I think that that will yeah. go a long way towards kind of redeeming that wonky ending that we have George Lucas to blame for that turned an interesting character into. I, I don't want to say a joke because I don't want to. I don't want to be one of the other ones that's going to rag on Boba Fett, but you know what I mean. Like they they need to like kind of redeem they that. Did him wrong. Yeah, they did him wrong. Yeah, they did him wrong. Redeem yeah. that moment. They vegeted him, bro. They totally vegeted him in that moment. You know what it is? Yeah, that, that's yeah. really what it was. They took a good character and they gave him an unceremonious like ass kicking for no reason. So they need to find a a cool way to get him out of the Sarlacc pit. Maybe he blows the whole yeah, damn. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I think I would say that because. You know, initially my thoughts kind of kind of ventured toward your territory when you first talked about the the appearance of Boba, mm-hmm. because um, the 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 thing is is that in season two Boba Fett is going to play a very small role, and so you know mm-hmm. it makes it, there's there's a way that you can put him and and still not break canon. Uh, in terms of him falling into the Sarlacc, because you can go back and kind of give the backstory of Din, Jin Jaren, you know what I'm saying, and say maybe he was instrumental in his upbringing uh, and how to be a Mandalorian and things of that nature, right? Yeah, maybe he was involved. But, oh, I agree. Right, exactly. I think maybe he cool. was like a mentor to him or something. Maybe like not that. like his his mentor, mentor, like you know, like his parent mentor, like he that other guy around. was, but he was around. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. Right, exactly. or maybe he's a, maybe he's a figure of leadership, like he ended up being in the Legends canon. So maybe that'll be like a way that he acts as an apprentice, but he's not his direct apprentice. You know what I mean? He gives him See, wisdom yeah, that, as a leader in the of Mandalorians. That I may I may have a little issue with because you know, and and Wolfie, you're not going to like the statement, but mm-hmm. you know, in in everything that we know about Boba Fett, he's not really a Mandalorian, so. I don't know how close. Oh my gosh. I, I definitely know he wouldn't. He wouldn't be. You it's know, a creed. A how many times we got to go over this? Yeah, they specific, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hold on, hold on. Here's the they really made that okay. clear that it's a creed. No, but see, here's the thing. Like now, see, we have to kind of be retrospective with some information that we have. The fact that they have Boba Fett confirmed means that Boba Fett was always going to be part of the show, which is the reason they put that part. Of they 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 just they explained that Mandalorian is a creed in the first season because they want to show you that yes Boba Fett's coming and he is a Mandalorian because it's a creed not a race. They would not yeah, have put you know, that in the first season if it's not meant to explain that Boba Fett is a Mandalorian. I agree. I agree with that. No, but see, but see, I I, I kind of I'll disagree a little bit to that because we we look at the Mandalorian and we see all these rules that this particular sect has Mm -hmm. we're not we're not talking as mandalorians in general because if that's the case then this this iteration of mandalorians breaks all of mandalorians that's in canon right now because one of the things that this sect says is that you're not supposed to take off your helmet right that's against their ways but yet if you look at every single mandalorian that has come through and we're talking about Dave Filoni's Except Mandalorian. Fred, basically. You see them frequently walking around without helmets. So to That's me, very true. When I look That's at Mandalorian true. season one, when I see Mandalorian season one, I see them more as a a sect that sits outside of it. And so for their group, they they're saying, well, yeah, we're Mandalorians because we're a creed. Can- 
but they're not to me in my mind they're not representative of mandalorians as a whole can i can i, can I make a point regarding that i think what it is i don't think that it's necessarily that <clears throat> i look at it this way I, I don't think that maybe maybe this is a specific sect that kind of broke off but after like the siege of mandalore and after a lot of mandalorians died you could make the case that maybe wearing a helmet was not the way until they became a hunted race, basically. Until they became a race. Yeah, but that that, that doesn't work. That doesn't work with Star Wars Rebels because Star Wars Rebels happen after the siege of, siege of Mandalore. Mm-hmm. Uh, Star Wars Rebels leads right up into um, uh, it. Leads right up into A New Hope, and those Mandalorians they were. That's where the dark saber came from, and they were fine with not using helmets. So you know that argument kind of doesn't really hold a lot of weight based on the canon that we know of the Mandalorians and shows that came after that. Okay. You know? Right. But here's the, here's the thing. Here's, here's the, the rub as they say. Okay. Mm -hmm. The fact that there are Mandalorians that don't consider that consider other people, Mandalorians just based on the creed just makes it the fact, even though there might be a sect that only considers Mandalorians, true Mandalorians, those that are born on Mandalore. um, The, the just the fact that like there are a sect of Mandalorians that consider it a creed and it, and can accept anyone of any background so long as they follow the creed uh, makes it makes it a fact. You know what I mean? You can't like discount that. You know, um, and you know you so you could also like think said, not to mention not to mention of... not to mention not to mention that like your beloved Maul is essentially a Mandalorian the moment that he became Mandalore, right? No, no, not necessarily. No. He he was never considered a, a Mandalore. He's not considered um, a. He took over. He he didn't become Mandalore. He didn't become no. like leader of the Mandalorian. What, what did he, he rule the planet? Didn't he? Andre, he took over. What happened in that instance was that sure he was leading the Mandalorians, but he was he was basically a puppeteer to one guy who was ruling the Mandalorians. So it wasn't so much that. He was actually a Mandalorian. He was using his crime syndicate ways to basically manipulate and use them. Yeah, because remember, the Maul in the in the cartoon series, um, he was kind of hiding out from the Emperor because right. he was doing all of his his operations and all of his you know gangster ways, you know. Um, with the, <clears throat> Sorry. the Emperor did not know about Maul until what was it in Clone Wars, right? He basically felt him in the Force. Yeah, he yeah. felt him in the Force, but he was hidden for all this time. And so when he took over Mandalore, he did it kind of in a shady way because he installed a leader. Um, I forgot what his name was. Um, he got killed off in this recent. Yeah, he got killed off just recently in this last season mm-hmm. of Clone Wars, but. He was basically, like Andre said, the puppeteer. Everything that happened on Mandalore was under Maul's purview, but he was not the visible leader. He had a Mandalorian installed that was doing his bidding. You know, I suppose. So, uh, stepping away from, leave it to Maul. To, uh, leave it. Leave it to Maul to to, to to do everything halfway. Well, st- stepping away from Maul for a second, and the, and the <laughs> Maul. Don't get me started, bro. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> this is a Boba Fett episode. Let me enjoy my day. What are you gonna say? Um, yes, I, I'm. I'm respecting that for now. <laughs> you know, but if these unsolicited mall attacks continue, <laughs> all bets are off, bro. <laughs> so anyway, I was gonna say um, um, real quick another possibility in terms of things that changed after Siege of Mandalore. And again, it, it might be a specific sect, but you could look at the endi- entire idea behind foundlings maybe that wasn't something that they did until practically the entire culture was wiped out and this is their way of rebuilding their culture as well Well, you gotta understand what the siege of mandalore really is because it's not that had nothing to do really with the imperials that was more of um the mandalorians taking the planet back from uh, Maul and his his crime sitting. We're not the siege of Mandalore. The the night of uh, what the heck is the name of that thing? The night of a thousand. Tears. It is the night of a thousand. Tears. Yeah, the night yes. of a thousand tears, which they still haven't explained yet. Exactly. That, that's something that we still haven't seen in canon, so that still remains. The siege was more the Mandalorians. Oh, and the the guy that was running the Mandalorians while Maul was there was Prime Minister Almec. 
So mm-hmm. just just so that we have clarity on who it is. You know, I have I I, I want to ask Eli and Andre what their thoughts are on what they think is is going to come uh, or how they're going to implement Boba. But I have one more suggestion. I do think that maybe, just maybe. Season two ends on a real cliffhanger, and Boba, who knows, maybe Din Djarin falls in the Sarlacc pit, and Boba comes and rescues him. <laughs> and then that's like where the, se- the second Please season go. ends. That's and then the third go. season, hold on, hold on. The third season right. will be <clears throat> will be uh, kind of Boba Fett mentoring, you know, Din Djarin also. Like, I know that Jose kind of mentioned it before, but maybe that's what the third season will be, where it'll be like, hey, this is how... You know, this is how you 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 bounty hunt, buddy. Um, you know, let, let me give my to- my yeah, thoughts real quick. Kind of, he, can, he can kind of act as like a stick, you know, to to Din Djarin's, uh daredevil, so to speak. Um, I got you. you know, where Boba Fett is still has, you know, I'm not gonna say that Boba Fett is, is without flaws. He is clearly, you know what I mean. Um, but they they kind of they they do have a lot of similarities in a sense where, you know. Who else could Din Djarin kind of learn from? If Din Djarin is also he's in a clan of two, and he doesn't have you know any peers around him that have been or are in his position, you know this would be kind of like the perfect person to kind of you know. Well, he, here's my take because I I still haven't gotten to this, so I'm still fighting off the the whole siege and all this other stuff. But um, like like I was saying before, I at first I thought that this was going to be more of a flashback, but then. Uh, Wolfie's right when you mentioned that he's going to play a larger role in season three. So, you know, I kind of I kind of rethought the way that I thought this was going to happen. And I think this was a conversation maybe you and and I had, Wolfie, on mm-hmm. what we thought, how we could bring Boba Fett back. But um, a, a good way of doing it is kind of framing him almost as a big bad for season three. Um, the, the, the Boba Fett has always been in my mind, and again, you're probably going to disagree with this, Jesus. but in my mind, he, he's kind of been a bounty hunter first more than a Mandalorian. Yeah. So I can see, uh, you know, somewhere where you still kind of have this, you know, this storyline going where Mad- the Mandalorian is still on the run with the child, and Boba Fett gets hired by somebody in the Imperial, you know, maybe it's... Um, Maybe it's the the guy that's wielding the dark saber, and you see him at the very end of season one, and that's the that's the conversation that they're having is like we got to bring in an actual real, you know, true blue bounty hunter to bring this guy in because everything we've done hasn't worked, and that kind of yeah. leads into season three where it's like you have Boba Fett actively hunting down the Mandalorian, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I like the spy versus spy stuff, you know, totally do, and I, I would love that angle simply because, again, it also, you know, lends more credence to the fact that Boba Fett is the greatest bounty hunter in the galaxy. I actually, Absolutely. I actually disagree with one point, Walt, but it's not a, I mean, it's not a big sticking point, so we could move past it, but I think, um, I personally think that he's more of a Mandalorian than a bounty hunter because the way that I saw him from especially from the prequel trilogy when he was a little kid, it seems like Django was the one who was really kind of the fake, right? He was the one who didn't care about the Mandalorian creed or the Mandalorian culture to any extent. Right. He was the one who was just in it for the money and in it for the fa- infamy and all of that, right? Um, I think Boba, honestly, actually, he was the one who really internalized the Mandalorian creed, in my opinion. I think he... Yeah, I yeah, think. See- uh, but like I'm going to I'm going to disagree on that a, a little bit also because he was actually featured in the animated series and he was part of a bounty hunter clan. No, I get yeah, that. So but there was no there Yeah, was I mean that's no that's his job, pre, you, know? you know. He there was no there was no implication in the series that he was following the Mandalorian creed. He was just out to get money and to to bounty hunt, that was his thing. So that's why I, mean, I made the that, that's what that I, that's what the Mandalorian was doing early on. That's what Mandalorian yeah. do. I don't think that's I don't that's think that's Jordan, uncharacteristic. You have your your pockets of Mandalorians, like you know the the like the pocket the, that the armor, like her small group of Mandalorians certainly. But like if you look at most Mandalorians, at least in what I've seen, they're they're very much they're lone wolves. 
So like, yeah, they could be part of a bounty hunting collective, but they're not necessarily going to be everywhere, you know, handling like like sort of representing the culture in that way because Mandalorian culture is not something that you kind of represent the other people. You don't care about getting people to join in the sense that you would with other religions or other cultures. So they just, you know, they live yeah, their the culture and that's it. In the Mandalorian. Right, I, mean, right, that's, guys, that's I want to hear anyway. It doesn't really matter. I want to hear from Eli. I really want to know what Eli thinks. Uh, Eli has been one of my biggest opponents on Boba Fett, so I can't wait to hear what he says about Boba Fett. Oh, what I I thought I was. But, uh, never mind. Actually, yeah, you kind of are. Sorry, Andre is the big. He's you have you he's have uh guy. you have surfaced recently as my my personal attacker nemesis. <laughs> My nemesis. <laughs> uh, but maybe it's because I'm so used to Eli just giving like a one or two rating out of ten. Oh. <laughs> he takes the cake on that then. <laughs> but no, I yeah, do want to hear from Eli and then like uh, and AJ too. I don't I don't think Eli was impressed with the Boba Fett announcement. He he kind of said it was what, what what was the word that you said? Corny. corny. Oh my god. Everything's it is the most you. non-corny thing. How is it corny? Eli, explain. Eli, explain. The one time, one time I will accept something. It's not corny. It's not. All right. Yeah. Corn chips. <laughs> I don't know, bro. That's kind of like... Um, but anyway, um... And I I think that I'm going along with the lines that he might be a mentor. Um and I could see how they do that. I could see how they do that. Um Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> go go get your puberty. <laughs> Yo, calm down. <laughs> All right. No, no, yeah, no, go on. Go I, Your I, side I, right now, bro. I know, I know, I love you it. You shouldn't attack him when he's trying to defend you. I'm not attacking him. How am I attacking him? <laughs> that came out of nowhere. <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. Right, go on, Ian, go on. Um, I think that like maybe like maybe he's like a mentor and probably this is gonna sound weird, but maybe like you can have um Boba Fett as one of his mentors and the Mandalorians as another. And that's going to lead him away from the Mandalorian side. Or he's going to get drawn to the Mandalorian side and be led away from Boba Fett. So it could go either way. So Boba Fett is a slightly different Mandalorian creed. Either one is going to be the enemy. or You know, actually, I like that point. Um, You know, Din Djarin is pretty much gung-ho all about the Mandalorian creed and the whole nine, right? Um and I think it felt like like he was part of the creed almost because he had to be since they rescued him. He like felt like he owed it to them and stuff like that. What if Boba yeah. Fett represents like, hey, you know, this is the real life. Like it, it's not all like you don't have to like follow the creed to the exact and 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 this is what it's really like. You know what I mean? Like kind of like giving him a reality check on 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 the real the current situation of the galaxy and all that stuff. You know, like Boba Fett like. You know, this is, I, I guess it's sort of almost like pun intended. He's jaded, you know, kind of, he has jaded armor and stuff. Um, <clears throat> he could be, he could represent kind of a jaded bounty hunter, no? Yeah, hmm. that's, that's kind of what I was going for. I like I that. Go. Nice. I'm so awesome. I like that. What about you, AJ? Well. <laughs> I mean, okay. Here we go. Of course, like you guys have been saying, I'm just going to echo, you're really going to need to explain getting out of the Sarlacc pit or even do this. What if a bounty goes wrong and Jajarin is thrown into the very same Sarlacc pit and he finds Boba Fett with his armor almost completely disintegrated because he's been in the Sarlacc pit? Hmm. And then they both get out, and then they're a buddy comedy. <laughs> oh my god! So you're trying to say that like Din Djarin is the one that's going to end up like rescuing Boba Fett? No, nah, that's that's just a crazy. That's that that's just a crazy theory. It'd, it'd be really funny. If that would be really happened. funny. <laughs> Somebody should actually like. You know what? Like we should do like a uh, uh, top five wildest expectations or or. 
you know, like we could do that. What what we like, yeah, we could do like a little like uh video or something. I don't know. I have a thought for you, like chill, things like that. I have a thought. You know, for, it's actually um, funny that. Sorry, go ahead. It's actually funny that you mentioned that because yesterday we, we've been watching the show recently. It's called Fringe, and he decided Ooh. to have a competition. I haven't seen and Fringe in ages. All my questions. Yeah. All, all of so, the questions. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me set it up. I did it, though. So did it, though. You know. what he, he ended up challenging me to do is he won. We, we were going to see the season one finale yesterday. So what we did was we compiled a list of all the things we thought was going to happen in the episode. He actually ended up getting two things right, and I'm two, fairly right. surprised. The rest of my questions weren't answered yet, so I don't know that for sure. But two were answered, and I got both of them right. It was That's awesome. I, t- I told you, bro. I told you. I, only got I love right. Fringe. I love yeah. Fringe. When it first came out, I was totally into it. Um, it didn't have like a huge fan for- fanfare when it first came out, which I was kind of sad about. Um, but I absolutely love that show. That show is great. That's, you know, anybody out there listening right now that, that wants to watch a cool sci-fi, uh, paranormal kind of show, uh, during this quarantine, totally binge that. That's a awesome show. Uh, Hashtag quarantine binge. Um, (laughs) I was going to say, I wanted to like slightly ref, well, not refine the theory, but like the way that you could make that more interesting is that you have actually, you have Din Djarin discover Boba Fett. Maybe he gets ends up getting trapped in the Sarlacc pit as well. But maybe what happens that would make it even cooler, I think, and it's a small detail, but even they they get stuck in ter- there together. And maybe Din Djarin has some equipment that Boba Fett uses to figure out how to get them both out of there. So you can create a dynamic where Boba Fett is still like the better bounty hunter. But like Din Djarin kind of like had the tool that he needed, but Din Djarin didn't know what to do in order to get them out. I just think that that way you can, because if you just have him rescue Boba Fett, I think that's going to kind of stick to like the 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 lame ending from Return of the Jedi. But if you have Boba Fett have agency, yeah, if you have Boba Fett have agency and he's the one who figures out how to get them out, albeit using something that Din Djarin brings in accidentally or otherwise then that would give Boba Fett like a little bit more of that like step up again to be like this badass, intelligent, like really great character. And then you could launch a sort of mentor-mentee relationship from there even if you wanted to. Although I don't know if I would want to go that route in the future. Hold on, hold on. Are we are we saying are we saying that the Sarlacc pit? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are we saying that the Sarlacc pit is the Mandalorian equivalent of uh, the garbage uh, compactor? I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. I, I really hope we don't revisit the Sarlacc pit in that way because that to me is you're you're going into the rise of the Skywalker territory. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I don't want I don't want the fan service. Yeah, I don't need the fan service. Just show me him getting out on his own. Because that that is just a badass moment for Boba Fett. Period. He doesn't yeah. need help. You know, I, I just I, when you when you're talking about having both of them in there, that gets a little that gets a little wonky for me. And like I said, that that you're you're treading J.J. Abrams water when it yeah. comes. Yeah. So yeah. Think, no. Personally. Yeah. Go on. Sorry. Mm-hmm. No. No. That's that's fine. I, I think Favreau is a, a, would be a little bit. You know, given all the backlash that ri- the rise of Skywalker got. I think he would kind of tend to shy away from things of stuff like that. Right. I mean, I think that if they just stick to the canon, right? Oh, God, I love saying that. If they just stick to the canon, oh, now okay. you- well, as long as they make it canon, because it always was. All right, buddy? All right. Anyway. The only way I'll have the Mandalorian show up is if he drops some Tums into the Sarlacc pit. <laughs> oh, my God. That would work for me, you know? No, no, listen, listen, seriously, seriously. I think that if they stick to the canon, the canon is awesome. You know, he only survived. The, the, the only possible way that he survives is not just because Boba's a badass, but because the Mandalorian armor is so badass. That yeah, armor exactly. like, gave him the time to climb out, which he had to shed when he finished climbing out. Like he realized, all right, this armor is no good to me anymore. Uh, but in canon, uh, Boba Fett had three sets of Mandalorian armor in, in different locations as a backup plan, which also, you know, shows how badass he is. So, you know, I think that like, there's, there's that also, you know, it'd be really dope to kind of get the flashback scene of him climbing out of the, the, the Sarlacc pit, having to shed the old Boba Fett beat up, you know, armor and then getting 
like a brand new backup armor without the dents and the scratches, but it's still that olive green and red and you know the the khaki and 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 stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That, that that awesome armor, but without it being all messed up. You know. Yeah, I was gonna say I, that's actually another thing I was hoping for is that he gets an armor revamp. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, all right. So aside from that. Okay, I know that, you know, I would love to make the entire episode about Boba Fett uh, because, let's be real, the entire Mandalorian anything is all about Boba Fett. But Tamora Morrison has also been cast as Rex, and, you know, you can't really have uh, Ahsoka Tano, Tano without Rex, right? Now, I'm not the big Clone Wars guy here. You guys are. So why don't you kind of, kind of like, tell me what you guys think that means for the Mandalorian? I know that it's probably going to be just one episode, uh, we may see – well, here's the question that I have for you guys. Do you think that Rex and Ahsoka are going to be in the same episode? I feel like it would be, right? Oh, of course. Yeah, they're, they're, Without a doubt. they're in tandem, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So um, how do you – do you feel like it's going to be like an, a one-off episode like they, they did kind of in the middle parts of the first season of Mandalorian? Or will it be – a something that will kind of be part of the Mandalorian universe itself or main story rather. Well, see when I originally heard that Ahsoka might be coming on, I took that as, okay, this is how we get the child away from Din Djarin because, Oh look, she's a force sensitive. Yeah. Oh look, mm-hmm. she probably knows Luke Skywalker from the Rebellion. Oh look, he's starting his own Jedi Academy. Oh look, he's a potential Jedi. Oh look, let's bring him there. But now that it's only one episode, like I don't know. Like is well, I, the way I thought about it is that she would throughout the season, maybe not in every single episode, but at least an episode here and there, try to convince him to let her take the child but him being who he is we wouldn't let him do that but let her do that right away but now that there's one episode that changes everything i don't know i don't know i don't think that it will be that strong of an influence because you can't have you literally can't have the mandalorian without baby yoda they're clan of two and i think that that's they gotta stick together no matter what so i don't think that they will have any kind of you know part of the show where they question giving him up. Maybe he does question it, but I think that the way that they bring Ahsoka in is that, uh, you know, however, in her episode, um, this is where, uh, in in Din Djarin's eyes, he gets the explanation of the Jedi and what the Force is and all that. Because right now, he doesn't know anything yeah. about the Force. He just knows that Baby Yoda can, like, choke people when people, like, try to kill him, you know? I agree. So maybe this way... She is the device that's using to uh, kind of explain to them and maybe even teach Yoda or maybe even teach, you know, Din how to nurture uh, baby Yoda's force abilities and stuff. Yeah. You know, so to speak. I was going to say that exact same thing. I actually agree with that totally. That's a good way to make her an effective character, even if it's just for one episode. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as Rex goes, um, I, I I don't know, I really don't know how they would bring Rex into the 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 Din Djarin story necessarily, well, unless it really there is, is, huh? There is a way. Go ahead. Of course there is. Show me, show me what is the way? What is the way? So the way, the way is that they all come from Django Fett, mm-hmm. and by coming from Django Fett, hmm. This could leave potential for confusing him with Boba Fett, and it'll be a funny bit. Ah. No, oh my gosh! <laughs> well, that, that 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 shouldn't be possible, simply because one, no one really knows what Boba Fett looks like. Actually, right? we do. We do. Uh, do the characters we do. In the universe. Yeah, the characters in the universe don't know. I don't think anybody's seen Boba Fett in the universe without his helmet on, right? Um, aside from when he was a, a child and a teenager and stuff, before he got the armor, after he got the armor, I don't think he's ever been shown without the helmet. Um, which, by the way, means that he's uh, full on believing in the Mandalorian creed. Anyway, um, 
but uh, I don't know. I, I like I, I don't know too much. I know that Rex and Ahsoka have a really strong you know relationship and stuff. I just I, I think that maybe they'll be obviously in the same episode together, where she can be the nurturing character and Rex is also jaded and trying to protect Ahsoka. Maybe it'll be a really cool battle scene where Rex uh, and Din Djarin kind of team up a little bit um and whatnot but i don't see rex being a major influence on the story you guys well i'm gonna i'm gonna you're gonna give me more to disagree with you on no 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 i'm not gonna disagree (laughs) (laughs) both the soka and and rex can show up and i'm gonna reference the the finale of star wars rebels so it, the finale of Star Wars Rebels, um, by this time, Ahsoka is now fully not a Jedi. She's a great Jedi. She doesn't follow the Jedi Order anymore. She was mm-hmm. she she walked away from the Jedi Order, right? And so the finale of, of the Star Wars Rebels show had the main character of Ezra Bridger, who is a Jedi. And um, he concocts away because the the big bad of of rebels was grand admiral thrawn so and this is going to sound wonky but the way that it ended was that the the ship that both thrawn and ezra bridger were on were transported away by hyperspeed space whales i know it sounds weird but you gotta you gotta go (laughs) Um, and so they were they were transported. That's that's kind of the reason you don't see Thrawn in any of these you know vehicles for Star Wars right now because the way it ended, they got transported into the outer regions and nobody knows where they are. And so until the very end of Rebels, has, yeah, well, that, exactly. That's what I'm saying. The very end of uh, Rebels had Ahsoka Tano coming back and teaming teaming up with another Mandalorian, Sabine Wren. And their sole goal was to go and find them and bring them back into the conflict. And so with the Mandalorian kind of operating in, in different places and in shady places and things like that, it could be one of these things where, you know, they just happen to be on the search for Ezra, Ezra Bridger. Wait, and wait, wait. Just, just because they're kind of like operating in the same spaces, they happen to join up in that one episode. Well, hold on, hold on. Give me one second, though. So, again, we we haven't seen, Wolfie and I haven't seen the Clone Wars or Rebels, which I know is blasphemy. But my question to you is, since we already got into spoiler territory for Rebels, is Thrawn is still alive? Yes, he is. So he could be a Mandalorian. Oh, Dude, he could be the big bad for the Mandalorian. Why wouldn't he? He would be way over Giancarlo Esposito's character in the pecking order. If he came back. Absolutely. And Ooh. and he was a great villain in Rebels. Thrawn I mean, is the best villain outside of any of the of movies or any. To me, to me, he's the best villain. Prob- outside of any Jedi, he's the absolute best villain in Star Wars. Because you need to watch Thrawn. Rebels just to see how great Thrawn is. In that remember, movie. I read the books way back when when Thrawn was invented as a character. So I know. I mean, I'm sure he's more badass in Rebels. I'm not taking away the fact that I have to watch that, but like he's yeah. always been like this amazingly awesome character since his inception. He is a badass, calculating son of a bitch on that show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like every single thing that they can think of, he's already five steps. That's ahead. That's how of he's him. always been. That's how- amazing his mind is and so yeah he's still alive in the universe now we don't know where he is so that's why i say it it would be interesting to see you know it's kind of like an intersection of paths more 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 than anything and the way i understand it um the reason that these two characters are only there for one episode is because there is thoughts that they're going to do a sequel to rebels which then can further expand on their search live action and then people. live action. And then yeah. you have the ability then to take Thrawn, who's now more of an established character. And hopefully people will love the characters on Mandalorian. And that'll translate to them watching Rebels and getting to know more about the character of Thrawn. And that's how you bring him into the live action. And then you have him in the books that came out again recently, too. So he's really been – maybe that's why they've been selling him again, obviously, besides the fact that he's so awesome. I don't know. Were you, you going to say something, Eli? Did I cut you off? 
Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Um, yeah. This is gonna sound. This is gonna sound like. <laughs> it's gonna sound corny, but I don't know. It might work. Uh. So what if? What if? Ahsoka and what's her face? Um, Sabine Wren mm-hmm. and uh, Rex. Rex, right? They're hiring bounty hunters to find on a search. Boba Fett just so happens to be one of those bounty hunters, along with the Mandalorian. No, that 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 completely sidelines the story of the Mandalorian. Then this is basically Rebels season wherever we last left off. I know, like a side quest, like um. But it's not a side quest. Like that's a, the like, thing. Like a supernatural uh, monster of the day type but, thing. But if right? you're enlisting him. That means he's going to be working for a long time, not just for a day. I know, so for like the end of the season. But, but, but no, no, that, that, no. I think, you know, I think they're just going to be using time. Set Up Thrawn. No. I think there's no better, no better angle here when you have such a popular villain that you need to bring into the, well, he's already in the canon, but I feel like if you're bringing those two characters in here and the the thing that they were doing at the end of Rebels is basically trying to find all of these, all of these villains and all these characters, it stands to reason that their maybe their mission will still continue into the Mandalorian, and that's what we get. We get Thrawn. I just, I feel like there's no other. I feel like hearing this and thinking about this, I feel like there's almost no other way that they really should go, because he's such again, he's such a great character. And then it, as as you said, Walter, it really will connect the worlds of Rebels and the Mandalorian together in a way that would create more hype for the whole canon for all of these shows and for the upcoming shows that are coming out like you know the ahsoka tano show possibly and and all of that and and the one thing that that you you can tell from the the filmmakers and and the creators of the mandalorian both favreau and filoni is that they do an excellent job of world building you know it's not just fan service that you're getting through these shows they're making connections that actually make sense Exactly, which is why to me, like the the biggest unless you unless you include characters from the sequel trilogy, which I don't think they're gonna start to do here, I think they're gonna stay away from that, especially with the backlash. Um and you know, including like a Snoke or something like that. But I don't think they're gonna do no. that. I really don't. No. I think that, no. that their best bet is to use the characters from the from the more well-regarded shows like Rebels and stuff like that. But I'm kind of beating a dead horse to death here. I think that's, to me, almost entirely the outcome. Um, I don't know what you guys think about about that. Or, like, what are the, what about the other castings that we had also, like, besides the other? Yeah. So, I mean, I wanted to I wanted to talk a little bit of, mainly about Bo-Katan also. Oh, like, I mean, God, uh, I'm excited about that. I love you know, because Katie Sackle is awesome. You know, because the, the, thing, the, thing, the thing is that, like, this – you know, I know that we got like a little glimpse of Death Watch, but we're not just getting any Death Watch uh, character here. Right. We're getting uh, the the heavy duty Bo Katan. You know, um, she was a total badass, um, and she didn't she become Mandalore also at some point. She did. Yeah, she did. Yeah, and that's my that's why I believe that. Um, and again, this is a character that's going to show up for a very short period. I think um, the actress that played that plays the role, Katie Sack- Sackhoff, she mm-hmm. just filmed her her scenes on May 12th. So this is how recent this is. But again, just just by that announcement where she just went in for one day to film her scenes, that to me suggests that we're going to be probably looking at a flashback and probably we're going we're gonna to find out that the character is dead. I, no, the reason why I, say I have that, to disagree with that very quickly is because I think, I think didn't bring her in. but because the way you the reason you bring her in is to explain how um what's that character's name at the very end um the imperial that has the dark saber oh yeah him you oh. got to explain how he has the dark saber and oh, the dark yeah. saber is not mm-hmm. something that you just go and steal there was probably combat challenge. involved Ooh, and kidding, and right? most likely. <laughs> He killed the person that had the 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 weapon in the first place. That's how that dark saber gets transferred, you know. So to me, that's why I think that you know this character is there to show how he got the dark saber. But that character is not going to survive that encounter because 
to take the dark saber, you got you basically have to kill the person that's wielding it at the time. Well, a- according to this article that I'm looking at, I was just looking at some stuff about Katie Sackhoff. There's about a five year time jump in between when she acquires the dark saber and when Moff Gideon has it in the Mandalorian. But Moff Gideon, yes. Thank but but I wanted to make a point though too because I don't I don't want to say for sure that just because they're bringing in an actress or an actor for one day that that's going to be a one episode or a short role. I think you have to consider that the way that things are being filmed now, just with the, with, with COVID-19 going around that they're maybe doing things a little differently. It makes sense to bring an actor and actress in quickly one day, two days, get it done, get them out of there for safety. So I don't think we no, can come I, to I, the conclusion I, that that would mean that she's going to be a small role. I, I do agree with that, but, but again, you know, the fact that she only came in for one day of of, of filming does suggest that she's not going to play a major role in the season itself. Not the whole season. So maybe she shows up for like an episode or two. But again, you know, and again, I'm just speculating. That's all I'm doing. I'm not giving anything as, you know, clear fact. That's just my feeling is that I happen to think that the reason that she's going to be brought in is to explain how Moff Gideon did get his hands on the Darksaber. That's, That's all I'm saying. We'll see. I'm really excited about Katie Sockoff playing the role you know, from Battlestar. You Battle. know, for me, she's so and I'm and the cool good. thing is is that she voiced the character um, in both Clone Wars and Rebels. Oh, oh wow, she, really? Yeah, she did voice. She did voice the character, oh, so nice. she has background with the character and knows the character very well. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. I had no idea. Even better. Even better. You know, um, I think that, like, this is too big of a character to kind of spend on just, you know, something like that. I don't necessarily think that they're going to kill her off. I think that what it does is that it, just that it gives us more Death Watch. You know what I mean? It, like, Death Watch, I remember correctly, Death Watch was a huge reveal for for us in the uh, first season of The Mandalorian, um, especially for you guys. Um, and I think that they'll just... You know, they could have brought any Death Watch character. The fact that they're bringing a, one of the top leaders of Death Watch, someone that became Mandalore um, and, and who is a total badass, I think that this is just to kind of expand Death Watch as a whole. Um, and maybe, who knows, maybe Death Watch will have a much more prominent role in the third season. And just like Boba being brought in to kind of give us like a breadcrumb to expand the third season, maybe she's being brought in to expand Death Watch. I was just thinking that while you were, while you were kind of going through that, I was thinking just beforehand, like maybe there is, maybe we do have this season, season two, she does have like a one episode or two episode role. Maybe we find out that. Moff Gideon somehow got the dark saber from her with and she escaped death. So maybe she can come into the third season and she could be a foil for not only not only Moff Gideon but Din also because she is kind of like also that anti-heroic character as well. So maybe she could be somebody that is like a third foil for both characters that kind of complicates things in season 3. I don't know. I mean, there's just a lot of theories for for what she could end up doing here also. But I really, really, again, I have to, I can't say it enough. I'm really excited to see her play this role in live action. I mean, one of the things like, oh yeah, sorry, sorry, go on, go on. Mm -hmm. So I went and did the background check. Uh, The Mandalorian that Walt was referring to earlier was Gar Saxon, the the Mandalorian who not only was in uh, Darth Maul's uh, sect, the, you know, the Shadow Collective, he also went and wielded the dark saber during Rebels, and he does have a badass armor, right? Yeah, he was on the side of the Imperials then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I you it know was, one thing that I wanted to talk about. <laughs> Bounty hunting is a complicated profession. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> you know, one thing we have Timothy Oliphant and Mike, Michael Bean, we have no idea who they're going to be, but they're, you know, I think that like best guess is that they might play like kind of like, you know, a stormtrooper duo even or something like that. How we had at the, uh, the last episode of, uh, season, season one. Well, um, Mike, Michael Bean does have a, a, a framework of what he's playing. He is playing a bounty hunter. We just don't know what bounty hunter he's playing. Dengar. Okay. Okay. Um, and, you know, 
one thing that kind of concerns me a little bit is is we've gotten you know especially going through the episode it's super dope to kind of speculate on what's going to happen and everything that we're going to have in the in the in the in the coming season but i'm a little bit annoyed that i know already so much about the second season Mm -hmm. you know um i want to i want to i want to kind of have this conversation at the water cooler at the end of the episode like oh man like they just showed uh you know bo katan like you know what does this mean for death watch and 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 the next season how do you think they're going to use i don't want to go through this you know four months five months before the actual show even airs the element of surprise is kind of gone for me um and that kind of sucks so you know it's either it's either a good thing or a bad thing right because either either they're giving us all this information because there's just that many surprises that are still actually going to come from the show or they just revealed all the main surprises that's going to make me feel like you know well i'm waiting for boba fett i'm waiting for soak i'm waiting for bo katan i'm waiting for all these characters to come up so every episode i'm just sitting there already like not surprised yeah you know like i'm sure that i'm going to enjoy it but i'm also not going to be surprised at all and that kind of sucks oh, because we'll like, moff gideon and the dark saber coming out that was a huge surprise and it's the shock factor it's yeah. it's what made us go like hey we need a we need a podcast tomorrow we got to like we got to talk about this right, right. now you had you like know? baby yoda was this big reveal you had the dark saber yeah, big yeah. You had all these great reveals in season oh, yeah. 1 i feel like they're doing this like if i'm being honest and you guys can 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 give me your opinion i feel like they're simply doing this just to since there are so many characters from Rebels and Clone Wars, I think they're doing this to get people back to Cle- to Rebels, excuse me, and Clone Wars, because this will this will make a lot of fans of the Mandalorian want to be like, well, who the heck is Bo Katan? Who the heck is Ahsoka Tano? If you don't know who she is, I mean, even even though we don't watch the show, we know who she is because she's that popular. But like, people who watch the Mandalorian are going to be like, okay, well now. Not everybody, but a lot of people are going to be like, I want to watch Rebels now. I got to watch Clone Wars. I got to find out more about these characters' backstory. I feel you like know, I guess, yeah, way to do it. That makes sense. I feel like, I mean, it sucks, honestly. I don't, I don't like it either. I really wish they hadn't done that because you're right. The water cooler conversations around season one of The Mandalorian are basically what made it so huge. Like when everybody found out about Baby Yoda and those memes started going up, like it was over. It was the number one show right then and there from that surprise hype. So... I don't know. It's not ideal. I agree with that. But I am yeah. definitely excited about Timothy Oliphant being cast as well. Go ahead, Eli. What were you, you going to say? I came up with a theory on Bo-Katan. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go ahead. I have one too, so stay tuned. All right. So <laughs> this is going to sound corny, and I don't know too much about Not everything has to be corny, Eli. Attack. <laughs> no, Attack of the Clones. She was in oh. Attack of the Clones. The Clone Wars. Oh, yeah, Clone Wars, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, isn't she the girl with the blonde hair? She's uh, a. The with... clones was bad. Not blonde. What? Isn't she's she the blonde. one with the short hair? What? Yeah, short hair. It's orange, not blonde. Basically blonde. Nope. Yeah, it's I'll blonde. Show you, I'll show you a picture real quick. I remember. But... She's she's a she's like a redhead. Yeah. She's she's kind of blonde. She's got hair. Yeah. Go on. Basically. She's strawberry blonde. If you yeah, want okay, to really fine. get into it. Okay. I got. <laughs> But I have I don't, don't know ask me much, how I know that I don't know too much how I don't I don't know too much on on her backstory and if I'm wrong you have to tell me but what if she could be the the group that the Mandalorian is working on it's like a a section of what the Death Wash used to be and she's looking for the dark saber well so see she, or maybe she maybe she did something. What if what if she after she lost it um to like uh grand moff Gideon? No, it's Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon, Moff Gideon yeah. Moff. yeah. Right? What if she like what if she like after that she just broke off from the Mandalorians? It's possible. Yeah, broke off from the Mandalorians and just made a group of people who just didn't want to be part of the Mandalorians, and she's the Forge Master. Yeah, maybe she started. I don't think she's the Forge Master. The Forge Master has an English accent. The Forge Master has an English accent too. The character, the actor for the Forge Master and 
Bo Katana, two completely different people. Yeah. Well, I was thinking the same thing. Piece. No, I was thinking the same thing. Again, you hire another actor yeah. that makes no sense whatsoever. We, we, we've seen that before. That's happened before. I don't think that's gonna happen. No. Yeah. Well, Eli, the reason I don't think that's gonna happen is because the actress who plays the armorer is a pretty famous actress, also. Yeah. I don't think they would take a pretty famous actress Dude, and just replace her. That was Amara. Plus, especially unless I mean, unless yes. unless she got a a role on another TV show, maybe, and she wanted to leave. I don't see why they would do that. And plus, again, like she has an English accent. I don't. Bo Katan doesn't have an English accent. So where's that going to come from in the canon? You know, they're gonna they're gonna change her into a yeah. different race. Because I was thinking the same thing in my head too, though. To be fair, but like then I had to break it down. Um, but I do. Yeah, think not, that she could have a Mandalorian, be a Mandalorian, and then break off and form her own group. I was thinking maybe, and I don't know if you want to expand. You, you were about to say something, Wolfie. Maybe you want to expand on this, but maybe she started the sect that Din Djarin yeah. is now a part of. Like she's not the armor, but she was the original leader of that group. That's possible too. Oh, you know yeah. that is true because he he was he was uh he was taken in by Death Watch, yeah. right? But they, you know. No. He doesn't sport Death Watch anything. Mm-hmm. So maybe that, that you know, so how did that come about? How did they like break off and stuff? Yeah, hmm, that's yeah, that's, interesting. Yeah, that that's another thing I really need to clarify right now. Death Watch is disbanded. Yeah, so that's can... yeah. They they they're not they're not a thing. <laughs> not anymore. But I, I mean, not anymore. There were members yeah. that were from Death Watch still alive, like Bo Katan, but Death Watch is done right yeah i know if you're bringing the character back though there's always the chance that they could bring back death watch here's what i think and you know what i'm gonna play a little bit off of what you were saying jose Mm -hmm. so or i think it was you that said that i don't know i'll just say what i'll just give my two cents so as of uh rebels when she was handed the dark saber she well first off even before that Mm -hmm. in the recent uh in the recent season of Clone Wars, when they left it off, she was Bo-Katan was effectively made the regent of Mandalore, the leader, right? Then you have the rebellion in huh, Star Wars Rebels, <laughs> and she's back in power again, too, if I'm not mistaken. So here's what I think the Bo-Katan thing might actually be in the Mandalorian. It might be one of two things. It could A, show the story of, um, what's his face, uh, Moff Gideon getting the Darksaber. This could be killing her off. It could not be. If it isn't, then, because one, the, one of the things that's peculiar about the Darksaber is that whoever wields the Darksaber is the leader of Mandalore. Maybe by losing the Darksaber to Moff Gideon, she kind of felt disgraced by that. Yeah, that's and thus sent herself out in exile or something like that. Yeah, that's what I was going for. And maybe with the reappearance of Moff Gideon, this is how she gets involved because she has to claim her honor back. And you know, her character is she's like a full blooded warrior. And this would be a very warrior like thing for her to do. Yeah. That's what I was going for, mm-hmm. that idea. You know, one thing that I got to say, and I, I think that, like, uh, we're uh, coming close to a close. Um, ha, I just had my little uh, turntable moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> what I'm talking about is in the office when Michael Scott comes back and he says, oh, how the turntables have turned. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, the, the one thing that I wanted to kind of uh, – you know, say, you know, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of like just taking the characters and using them once and then literally killing them off. Um, you know, in rewatching the first season, which I did like about a week ago or two weeks ago, I don't even remember now. You know, the uh, there's a couple characters that I really enjoy that they just kill them Ming off, uh, especially in the episode, the gunslinger episode. Ming-Na Wen. You know, wait, which huh? was that? Yes, exactly. Yeah. I thought she was absolutely awesome. I don't know why they killed her off. That sucks. Yeah, I don't, she was so badass, and they literally used her for ten minutes. Maybe they'll, you know. Maybe they'll. No, I don't want to. I don't want to see them like revisit characters mm-hmm. like that. No, that, that yeah, doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, I don't like because that's just going into the whole like I want to call it. You know, uh, the uh, 
uh, Rise of Skywalker syndrome where like, hey, people really liked her, so let's bring her back somehow. Yeah. You know, um, so that kind of sucks. Uh, like, there's certain characters that deserve that, and then certain characters that didn't deserve, you know, to be just cut out like that. I also thought that um, uh, the the guy that played the Han Solo a clone essentially in that gunslinger episode. I think that he shouldn't have died either. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, Lord. What? Is- yeah. It's like, it, it just, you know, I think it, it, there was a lot of potential there for, um, you know, longevity in the series. Uh, Bobby right? kind of all kid, that actor. Uh, yeah. Bobby yeah. Well. I mean, now that I think about it, now that I think about it, that we have, uh, Jake. you know, IG, mm-hmm. IG 11. Yeah. IG 11 quill, uh, Bobby Cannavale's, you know, the kid, the bounty hunter that died, uh, me not went character. We have all these characters that like were super cool, awesome. Oh man, they gave them all Boba Fett deaths, <laughs> like deaths that were too early. <laughs> yeah, some of them got like really, really quick send offs that kind of suck. I guess Quill yeah. had the longest arc in terms of his 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 end. Which, yeah. yeah, still sucked. Uh, well, actually, Lig Eleven did, I guess, but. It, it's still like those two characters. Pro- they probably, sh- I think we talked about this before. They should have killed off one and not the other, maybe. Maybe, yeah. But yeah. that's where we're at. Anyway, I hope they don't overdo it in season two. Yeah, I hope they don't. That's what I'm saying. I hope they don't do that this season. So, you know, the the last thing that I that that I think we should bring up is the directors yeah. because just like season one, we're gonna be having. Is it? It's not. Is it a one new director for every episode, or is it that we have like a batch of batch of episodes that have guest directors. I don't know. I think Taika Waititi is supposed to direct a couple of episodes, right? And then uh, who else were the big names that were announced this season? Walter, I think it, you know who the directors are. Yeah, right? I think Paul yeah, so we, have, we have three that I think are bare mentioning. Uh, one of them is Carl Weathers. He's going to actually be directing right. an episode. That was of- oh, that's right. That. That's right. I remember that. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and the other yes. two are, are very, very interesting. Um, the one is Peyton Reed, and you'll know him because he directed oh, Ant-Man, the right? Ant-Man movie for Marvel. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The other one, to me, I find super interesting, and that's Robert Rodriguez. I didn't even know that one. I had heard the other two. I had no idea that Robert Rodriguez was attached to direct an episode this season. That's actually awesome. Yep. Yeah, that, that one's definitely happening. And he's done some some great stuff. I mean, and and his, his stuff is kind of like all over the place because – for every um you know super bloody movie that he makes he's also the creator of spy kids which just blows my mind <laughs> you know what yeah. he is wow yeah. genius that's probably why he had um Danny Trejo in spy kids and he was like i know you from all my other like violent action movies so like you want to play like their uncle or whatever the hell he was in that movie <laughs> Yeah, this is the guy who did what? From Dust Till Dawn, yeah, he City, was. El Mariachi, Spy Kids, Alita Battle Angel. A lot of movies that we all enjoyed. Um, and a lot of movies that are very stylized exactly. in a way that's not exactly like... Um, well, no, actually, you know what? It is kind of like The Mandalorian because he has like a very Western feel in a lot of his, his movies. Yep. Like Desperado, obviously, Once Upon a Time in Mexico from Dust Till Dawn. Sin City has a, a slightly noirish Western feel, I think. So he can definitely translate into the Mandalorian extremely. Oh, yeah. Right. And, and the interesting thing about his process is that not only is he director, mm-hmm. but he does a lot of it, a lot of the production stuff himself. He does he does the uh, score. You know, he's very involved in a lot of different aspects of the filmmaking process. Right. He's not just behind the camera. You know, his he's he's hands on on everything. He's so he's got I, a he's got a I'm real very ex- sorry. He's he's got a real like I was gonna say you're right. He has a real like like stamp on his work that is very unique in comparison to anybody else. Is like this sort of schlocky camp, um type type of uh I guess genre vibe, but at the same time it still works out really well. Like I said, movies like Sin City and. Looking, looking him up, I'm also reminded this is random and has nothing to do with Star Wars. But he is also he made that movie with um, with John Malkovich that's not coming out until 2115. Did you guys hear about that? <laughs> what? No. There's a movie called A Hundred Years that John Malkovich and Robert Rodriguez created in 2015. 
no. be released on That's November terrible. 18th, 2115. 2115. 100 years from now. What? Oh my God. Yeah, I know. Kind of out there. But like, yeah, there's a movie that they're not releasing for. They, he. That's how you can see how eccentric he is. You know what I mean? If he's making movies like that with John Malkovich. Uh, well, John Malkovich is pretty damn eccentric himself. So. And apparently the music was composed by Pharrell Williams. So I guess that'll give you all of the eccentricities that you need from these three different guys. But like, yeah, Robert Rodriguez, you know, in a nutshell, sounds like really exciting to me because of all these great projects that he creates. Yeah, the one the one negative is that we're not getting Taika Waititi back as a director for season two. Well, he'll probably be with it's his not. movies, right? That's surprising. Yeah, so that, that's a little bit of a downer. Um, but hey, it is what it is. Um, sure. Before we wrap so, this, yeah. this episode up, I just want to ask one question, and this relates to the main topic of the episode. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to bring it to all of you guys, but I guess it's a little bit more directed to Wolfie. Um, mm-hmm. Do you feel that in any way the the announcement of the Boba of Boba Fett being in season two and conversely in season three, do you think that that because he's such a huge character, do you think that it, it would overshadow the main character of his own story in some in some way just because Boba Fett is back? You mean the main character as in Din? Yes. You know, I don't think that like. It, it will overshadow him necessarily. Um, obviously, it all depends on how they do it. Uh, but the same way, I mean, it, it, if it's done wrong, it can totally overshadow, um, you know, Din Djarin, But I, I don't think that they will let that happen. You know what I mean? Like, for example, in The Rise of Skywalker, it really is mostly about, you know, we have Ben Solo's character, but it is supposed to be about, um, you know, uh, Ray you know, quote unquote Skywalker. But I think that Ben Solo's performance and his story arc and what they did with him overshadowed the actual rate, just, just his performance in that one movie in Rise of Skywalker, I think overshadowed uh, Ray's character in the entire trilogy. In well, my it's opinion. Though, because, and, and not to, not to get off topic, but the rise of Skywalker should be about a Skywalker, not a, a descendant of Palpatine. That's, you know, I was thinking about that the other day, and I think that's the thing that really bothers me about the sequels is because you're ending a Skywalker saga and focusing not on a Skywalker but on a, on, on a descendant of Palpatine. That I really mean, hurts me. You know what I'm you saying? You know, I, again, me, me personally, I think that obviously could, I have a lot of things that I don't like about Rise of Skywalker, but I also – maybe it's because I also have that same feeling towards the Mandalorian Creed and everything that I don't – I, I don't agree with the fact that like you have to be a blood relative of anything in order to claim the name. If you've been raised by that person, I like the idea of giving the Skywalker name to someone that's not Skywalker because she was raised and influenced by the Skywalkers in a sense. I hate it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't discount that. I think that it was done terribly. You know what I mean? Uh, just because they did it without giving you know, Ben Solo, a Skywalker, the actual, you know, you know, the, the, the feature of that, but, uh, I don't discount it. Now going to, going back to the Mandalorian, I, I think that it's possible that they can overshadow, but I don't think that they will. Um, I don't think that they're going to make the, the show about Boba Fett and, and, and I don't think that they should, you know, uh, as much as I really, really wanted there to be a Boba Fett show, we don't have that. And because we don't have that and we have the Mandalorian in place, I think it would be a big mistake to then make the show about Boba Fett because then it like, it doesn't necessarily cheapen Boba Fett in any way. It's just, it gives us fan service, but it gives us, we just have too much of that bad taste from Rise of Skywalker at this point, as much as I, you know, love Boba Fett as a character, um, mm-hmm. I don't want to feel like they're just giving it to me just to please me. You know what I mean? And 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 giving it to me to uh, like while st- while sacrificing, you know, everything that they've created with the Mandalorian. I yeah, I agree. I don't think I think the show is in great hands. You know, with with Favreau and Fino- Filoni, 
Fanoli, Filoni, Dave Filoni, Dave Filoni. Uh, sorry, Dave Filoni. Uh, with Dave Filoni running things, I think he has a real mastery of taking characters like, you know, really, really important characters like a Darth Maul, like a Obi Wan Kenobi, like a Yoda, and inserting them into a story about new characters without having them overshadow those new characters, as is evidenced by everyone's love of Clone Wars and Rebels and the fact that characters like Ezra Bridger and Ahsoka Tano and Captain Rex and all of these great characters came from these shows, you, you, I get the sense that they know how to juggle these canon older characters and, and have them provide a little bit of fan service to, to make fans excited, make fans happy, but not so much that they, you know, take away from characters like Din or Ahsoka or the characters who are the main characters of these shows. So I don't see that happening. I think that even though it's Boba Fett and he's huge, he is the, the, the main Mandalorian, the original Mandalorian from Star Wars canon, I think they'll handle it well so that he won't overshadow uh, Din's character. That's just my opinion. I think they've done it so far. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I, I think, like you said, the the show, the series, and in, in of itself is in very, very good hands. So, you know, <laughs> I think I just wanted to put it out there and see what you guys thought. I think the one guy that will overshadow everything is Timothy Oliphant. Will probably show up as his character from Justified, like without a costume change at all, and just <laughs> and just be like and just chew the scenery as Timothy Oliphant is wont to do. I'm really excited about that too. Yeah. I can't wait for it. yeah. I read somewhere that, that that he can't show up with a mask because then you're taking away from his handsomeness. Well, he's so. he's also like he's got like this great like like um he's got this creepy like yeah, he's a good-looking dude, but he's got this this creepiness to it that works well with the characters that he plays. He's got like oh, this, absolutely. yeah, like he's just I don't know, he's 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 good at his little he's thing. Got always that thing. thing. What's that? He's, yeah, he's got, got a got look. He got a very unique. unique look. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and he's a fantastic actor, so he knows how to make his look and his character's work. I haven't really seen Justified, honestly, but I know that it's really, really good. I've seen a couple episodes and I've loved him in so many other things. So let's just say that it is justified that he's in the, uh, in this 100%. Yeah. His character is supposed to be like the super secret role. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what they do with him. Ooh, what if he's, well, I don't know. If he would be, what if he's Thrawn? Yeah. I was going to say, what if he's Thrawn? But I don't know if he would be a good, <laughs> Oh my God! If he was thrown, that would be awesome. Dude. <laughs> oh my God! That really would be. <laughs> that oh might be. God. That, that might be, actually be perfect. Oh man! Now, like Jose, please, Jose, please email Lucasfilm, Filoni, and and Favre. Like we got to get this done because he would be so perfect for throwing. Yeah, because he's got that. He can be calculating, but also like have this under the surface, like boiling tension and evil. That, that like, because that's how Thrawn kind of is, right? He's always kind of like this calm, calculating villain. But there is this fire, this this crazy energy underneath that can just, like, wreck you if he really wants to. So I think that Timothy Oliphant. You know, I'm looking at pictures. I'm looking at pictures of Thrawn, and I think that Timothy Oliphant could definitely, definitely pick him out. You know what? We should message Boss Logic to give us, like, his renditions Ooh, of these characters, I like that idea. what they might look like. He's got to hit ah, logic. He, he would probably do it right away if he felt like it was a good casting show. Hell yeah! Oh well, yeah, we got we got a goal, dudes. We got to say like, yo, maybe Timothy Oliphant as Grand Admiral Thrawn because he could pull off the look, he could pull off the voice, he could pull off the demeanor, he could pull off everything, man. Oh man. He can 100% do this. Oh, man. Oh, oh man. Now, Jose, now I'm going to be upset if he isn't. Yeah, Jose, that's great fan casting, man. That is that is awesome. Well, I didn't do it, but, like, well, we'll yeah, well, we'll see, man. You know what? Let's, let's put it up online and see what people think of, like, our casting idea of Timothy Oliphant as, uh, as Thrawn. Oh, man. It'd be amazing. All right, we're done. Podcast over. There's nothing else to talk about after that. That's it. Yeah, this is a lot of fun, man. Oh, um, can't wait. Can't wait for season two. Can't wait for season three. Can't wait for Timothy Oliphant as the uh, Admiral Thrawn. You know, season two coming <laughs> in October, right? So we, yep. have it yeah, October. Oh. It's been confirmed that it's October. Yeah, COVID nineteen hasn't delayed it. So um, probably because the, the way that they I'm, I'm probably because of the way that they film yeah. this. I was thinking. I was actually talking about it earlier because of that like green screen thing that they do with Unreal Engine. You don't really need set designers, so that's a lot of cast and or that's a lot of crew that don't 
be there yeah. and make things a little more dangerous. Yeah. And there's not a lot of work that they have to do in posts. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that makes it a little bit easier, I would say. You just have your your key actors doing their thing. They don't even necessarily have to be that close to each other because you could use camera angles to make them look closer and stuff like that. They can make it work. Uh, either way, I'm really excited about our possible new fan casting and about all these great new directors that are going to be joining us, all these great new actors that are going to be joining us for season two. Anybody else have any other thoughts about all of the awesomeness that we've shared today? I just can't wait for season two to start. I, I, yeah, I need man. to fast forward to October. <laughs> it's coming up then. All right, then. So let's... We, we can use the hyperspace space whales to get us there, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's where, yeah, that's, that's where we'll find on with the space whales. We'll find him there. You know what? There's one thing that I got to say, yeah. which is pretty freaking awesome. Cool. We went through an entire episode without a single DB Legends argument. How awesome is Don't that? Say that? Now, why did you have to put that out there? Because now these kids are going to start. Yeah. What are you talking about? Actually, um, I was going to say. Oh just, my God. Come on. Come on. No, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do you it. just amped him up. <laughs> you want to know the <laughs> reason why I don't want Kefla? You know what? Oh, you my God. You know what I, you know what I think? I think all of these characters suck, and I'm a Dragon Ball fan. So they're all <laughs> terrible cards, and none of them are very good, and both of your decks. I'm going to let you guys go ahead and argue. Go ahead. I want to hear this now. Legends. Let's put it this way. Dokkan. No, you could who, you guess, could rip on Dokkan all you want. I, I guess, really don't care. Because guess who guys, has? We are out. LRs. <laughs> You know what? I pulled one out of extra, extra secret ingredient. Good job. No, you can't do no, that. No, I, I, I just did. Sorry. Not on the pot. Oh, of if, course if, I can. If, I just did it. This is a D and D reference oh because I'm trying to make the most powerful Guys, weapon. In the game. That is the Get Geek News podcast. Yeah. Peace out. I can't wait for you to say an <laughs> Ultra Instinct Moro cards or whatever. Anyways, guys, we're going to leave it off there. Thanks once again, as always, to everyone out there for joining us on the Get Geek podcast. Um, just a reminder, we want to thank you for bearing with us with some of these sound issues that we've been experiencing. We're recording remotely, so thank you for sticking with us. We hope that all of you out there are staying safe. We hope that all of you out there are still enjoying some awesome content. Um, as usual, as a reminder, if you guys could look us up or rate, share, subscribe on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever your favorite podcasts are sold. Um, and, you know, reach out to us on Instagram at Get Geek Podcast with any ideas and any thoughts about episodes, feedback, whatever it is that you like. Um, we do, as always, appreciate uh again all of your listens and all that and and some of the ratings that you've been putting up recently so thank you to our fans and everyone else um yeah so i just want to say as usual and as always from the crew here at the get geek podcast everyone out there in internet land please stay geeky my friend